All right, in this video, we will be talking about artificial sperm and eggs that could totally wipe out and destroy traditional families and humanity on the global plantation farming market that is really the world. Yeah, we're gonna talk about that and a lot more with a special guest, Max Egan, a scholar, a philosopher, a great thinker, and someone I truly look up to and really puts things in context with some of the deeper questions about life, existence, and what's really happening in this world. So Max, I just really wanted to talk to you about kind of the bigger agenda that's that's happening here. It seems like the United States is full on perpetual war for decades now, and it seems to be done by design. It seems like the United States major tool and only tool is a hammer and they're seeing everything as a nail. What I really wanted to talk to you about is why this is happening. Uh, what's the bigger agenda here? Because it seems like a continuation. We know Donald Trump came in and he promised that he would change these things and offered a solution to the bigger problems that we faced. And now we're learning he backtracked on all of them, did a hundred complete 80 degree turn and is continuing the same policies as all the other presidents before him. So what do you think is, is happening here with this perpetual war? And what do you what do you think is the bigger agenda here? Well, the big agenda, of course, is control, you know, and they, they do it the same way every time. You know, they come in, they say they're going to be doing all this stuff to fix up all the domestic problems. And, oh, but hang on, we've got this overseas issue. We've just got to take care of this war first. And it's always the same thing. It's always the same thing. And, you know, what it's about is, is locking the whole system down. I mean, they'd really like to bring in the Chinese system and lock everybody down this way. I mean, this would probably be why he's having such you know, good relations with China at the moment. But even in what we do, you know, like um, I was talking to Benny last night, it, it's, it's, it's really difficult because we, we're facing a system that is so corrupt and we're trying to expose that corruption. But in doing that, we've got to be really careful that we don't just bring the whole thing crashing down around us and leave a, leave a power vacuum, you know, so because that's what they want. I mean, if there was to be, you know, a complete uprising in this country, there was to be some sort of a revolution or something, you'd get another country just step in as, as much as they could and take over the place. They don't really care about the people, they just want the resources, you know. So um, we've got to be really careful how we do this, you know. Uh, you know, we, we want to change the system, but we really, we're not prepared to change ourselves. That's the problem, you know, because what they want to do, I mean, pit us all against each other. Um, you know, the whole, there's so many, it's, it's hard to say what, what is the big agenda because there's so many that are coming together. You've got the, the whole transhumanist agenda. You've got the merging of the genders. You've got the whole... Um, destroying this destruction of our sexuality that they've done, which is causing them to be able to merge the agendas. They've, they've been bringing in systems now where they can um, basically create humans without parents through all the transhumanist stuff, through stem cell research. They're able to create functional sperm now. They're able to, create, able to create, uh, functional eggs now. They've got exogenesis chambers. They can grow these eggs in. Artificial and sperm them. and artificial eggs not made artificial. from, uh, wow. I didn't even know about this. Artificial eggs, yeah. That actually developed artificial sperm and ectogenesis chambers. So all they really need women for is to harvest eggs. But in the last six months, they've developed how to create artificial eggs. Wow. Stem cells. So now they don't need parents. So you look at this agenda, this whole GM agenda and this merging of the sexes and all that they're doing, they're trying to breed a race which is basically stupid and can't breed. And they want it to put it out globally. That's what they're doing. I mean, ultimately, that, that's the agenda. And they keep us distracted with all of these theater wars. I mean, what's going on with North Korea and all this stuff? I don't think there's going to be a nuclear war with North Korea. Why would North Korea attack the United States? Think about it. Think about it. This is a tiny little country in, in Asia there. You really think it's going to launch a nuclear strike against the United States of America when the United States of America has got England and it's got Europe and it's got Russia would jump on its side. Everyone would jump in to help. If anybody launches a nuclear weapon against anybody, the whole rest of the world is going to jump in and stomp on them. Why would North Korea do this? Now, it's theater for the masses. Yeah. They keep us distracted, keep us in fear. All of these governments collude with each other to create fear so they can lock their populace down. You know, the North Koreans think America is a threat to them, and they think all the Americans want to come and kill them. All the Americans think all the North Koreans want to come and kill them. You go to North Korea, it's just normal people like you meet in L.A. They don't want to kill anybody. Nobody wants a war. It's the governments, you know. And when the wars break out... Who gets bombed? All the people. The governments go to war with each other and then the people get bombed. What's going on here? And it's a joke. It's theater, you know? 
Yeah, I was going to ask you, you brought up theater, and we just did a whole video breaking down the geopolitical situation with Russia moving its troops now to the North Korean border, China setting them up, having their uh, fighter pilots on command right now as we're speaking. And I always kind of wonder, what if there was an agreement between Russia and the United States to continue to make each other the enemies in order to fill and fuel that military industrial complex and make their own people afraid of each other to create an enemy? Because once the government has a big problem, of course, they'll come out with a bigger solution that works in their favor and people will clamor and give up their power give up their self-authority in order to say yes government do this for me because there's no way we can handle the russians or there's no way we could handle the americans and i've wondered do you think personally because i thought about this theoretically do you think there's a possible collusion and a possible alliance of these two countries kind of playing up these fronts against each other for a bigger benefit absolutely Absolutely, I do. I think it isn't just these two countries either. I think it's all countries do this, really. I mean, even if you talk to soldiers, you go over to Iraq or over to these places, ask them how many on, on the street, you know, hands-on battles they're involved in. Not, not many. You know, most of these wars are theatre. They're not even wars as we present them. They're just, you know, going in there and harvesting resources, um, assassinating people, harvesting people, all sorts of stuff like that. Even the, the stuff that goes on between Israel and Palestine, how much of this is theatre? How much is the theatre that goes on between Iran and uh, Israel as well? I was actually interviewing someone called Brendan O'Connell yesterday, who's a man who's on the run. He's an Australian man who basically protested the fact that there was Israeli fruit being sold in Australia that was uh, labelled as Australian fruit, and he supports the Palestinian issue. So he's basically in there having a bit of a protest about it, just alerting people to the fact, handing out flyers, ended up in a confrontation with some Israelis and ended up doing three years in jail for defamation and uncovered the fact that there's this whole global spy network. When he got out of jail, he ended up leaving the country. He's on the run at the moment. He went to Iran. And they tried to set him up on uh, Press TV and a few places like that, going to give him a job, give him an apartment. And what he wanted to address was the Israeli spy network and the Mossad spy network, which has basically infiltrated the entire global surveillance system. But the Iranian government wouldn't let him and Press TV wouldn't let him. He wasn't allowed to talk about that. He wasn't allowed to really talk about the stuff that would really uh, put the nail in the coffin of Israel. So that was Iran. You would think Iran would, would clamor for this information. So why was it suppressed even in that country? So how much of this is theater? How much of all of this is theater simply to control the people, simply to create the illusion of fear in the minds of everybody? Because if you go out and travel, and you, you're well-traveled, I'm well-traveled, you go and travel to any country, where do you find anybody who hates you or hates another country or wants to have a war? All you find is people who want peace all around the world. So I just wonder how much of this is theatre, how many of these wars are really fought, and what is this really all about? Yeah, I'm starting to believe more that this is all a big kind of poker game with all these world leaders sitting around, and if someone threatens that poker game, they make sure it is stopped and squashed no matter what, so they can continue their kind of game against everyone. Uh, I'm, I'm really shocked about the example that you just brought up. The, the guy faced three years for defamation. Is there more explanation to the charges and why he was in jail for three years? Well, look, I've, uh, he was actually given, uh, uh, what, two years jail for one charge and 10 years jail for another. Basically, he said to uh, he said in the argument, he said to someone, um, look, your, your, your Judaic faith is, is a racist faith, is what he said. And then the guy said, oh, my God, you just called all Jews racist. I'm offended. You've just broken the law. I want your name. And he had him charged for, for this state. And they, they went, went to the extreme. They got the Australian foreign minister involved. They got the Australian ambassador to Israel involved. They got all sorts of people involved, and they made a real example of him. He got out of jail on bail, and the bail stipulations were ridiculous. So he wasn't allowed to talk to anybody. But the first bail stipulation he had said he wasn't allowed to use technology. He was not allowed to possess technology. He's going, well, can I have a remote for my television? Am I allowed to have a blender or a toaster, you know? And uh, he wasn't allowed to enter a shop that sold technology. And he's going, well, hang on, they sell mobile phones in Woolworths. Can I go buy groceries? You know, so... It was ridiculous, you know, but he ended up just borrowing some money and, and doing the run. And now he's on the run. And he's, he's hiding out in a, a couple of foreign countries. But the first place he went to was Iran. Yeah. And uh, he, he just ended up leaving Iran because he was disgusted with uh, the, the way they wouldn't let him say what he wanted to say. And he's, he's in uh, possession of a lot of quite valuable information regarding the promise software, regarding the whole global surveillance grid. I actually interviewed him yesterday. And I'm going to air the show on uh, on Surviving the Matrix tomorrow night. Mm -hmm. And I had a lot of connection problems and audio problems in that particular show, stuff that I never have. 
which is very interesting as well. He also noticed that when he added me on Skype, he couldn't find me again. I'd been deleted from his contacts. The only way he could find me was in the uh, recent conversations. Mm. So that's all very interesting. Yeah, but it's it's an interesting story. And I'll link you up with him. You might want to have a talk to him. Yes, uh, definitely do that. And send me the link with your interview with him. We're going to put it in the description of this video. Now, something you said earlier really resonated with me when you were talking about humanity not being ready to be kind of self-reliant, to step up, because there's been multiple attacks on kind of human spirit, on the breakdown of the modern family, on uh, just breaking down our spirituality and creating more immorality as well. And I wanted to talk to you about that. Do you think that's something that is kind of a global conspiracy or is more kind of a monetary driven incentive? Because we're seeing the rise of artificial intelligence and we're seeing these artificial sperm and eggs that you were talking about. And it may seem like there's a bigger kind of agenda here, but it also may seem that people are just out for themselves trying to make a buck, just like we're seeing Uber roll out self-driving cars, just like we're seeing all these kind of artificial intelligence expansions as well. Do you think the powers that be are that organized? Organized, or do you think that they're going towards a trajectory that is more monetarily incentivized? Well, look, money, money is just the catalyst that holds it together. It's just the glue that holds the system together. Money is, money is designed to keep people in a state of scarcity. That's its purpose. Money creates a barrier between you and the abundance of everything else. But what, they, what they've done is they've basically disconnected us from who we are. They've really disconnected us from our sexuality, which is so important for people. It's such a taboo topic, sexuality. But we live in such sexually repressed societies and when you can control people's sexuality, then it creates doorways and little back doorways and little ways of controlling them, little things that happen in their mind. And once you start this process of, of this degeneration of society, of the degeneration of the morals of society, and I'm, when I'm saying you know, the degeneration of the morals, really the breakdown of the family unit, the breakdown of love, the breakdown of a loving family unit. You know, we live in a, in, a, in a world where as soon as our kids are old enough to work, we, we throw them out so they're not a burden on us. You go to the third world, these are very, very strong companions, really, really loving family units. But they'll go in there and they'll use money, they'll use trinkets and wealth and social standing to basically separate all these third world countries as well now. This is the transfer of wealth we're seeing from the first world to the third world. They've got all of us separated and disconnected from ourselves, from our natural sexuality, from a loving family unit, and through the, the use of trinkets and, and social standing and status. Now they can pull all that away. They can turn the first world into the fourth world, transfer wealth from the first world into the third world, and they can break down the moral standards of that society as well. And once they can do this and they can disconnect people enough, and they've got this technology now. I mean, you look at the diseases that we've got in, in here, the, uh, you know, cancers and all the diseases that have developed in the last couple of hundred years since they do things like ban hemp and ban real medicines. We've developed all these problems. So now we need all these fixes, which is all this genetic modification. Oh, it's really hard to breed now, hard for people to have kids. Oh, well, we've, got the, we've got the fix here. We've got artificial sperm. We've got artificial eggs. We've got ectogenesis chambers. Eventually, it will become normal for it to be like this. They're even predicting now that by 2029, 50% of children will be autistic. This is just the way it's going. They're bringing in autistic Muppets now just to make it normal, to normalize the fact that you've got to expect this because we're creating this. So you eventually you create a race over a couple of generations that's completely disconnected, doesn't think clearly, cannot breed, and they just go and order their children and they get a blank human from the ectogenesis chamber. This is, this is Brave New World in 1984 rolled into one, taken to the nth degree on steroids. Mm -hmm. really is where we're going, and all of it is in the public domain. It's all in mainstream science magazines. Look at the latest National Geographic. They're saying um, enhance our you know, self, self evolution and all of this sort of stuff. You know, I saw a man with the antenna sticking out of the, you know, an impressive antenna sticking out of the back of his head and all this sort of stuff, this cyborg stuff that they're bringing in. So they're making it very fashionable. It's all in the public domain. And while this is going on, they're keeping us distracted with all these theater wars and the thought that Donald Trump's going to save us, all this left and right identity politics. While all this is going on and people are concerned about Donald Trump's tweets and they're concerned about whether Russia was involved in this and whether we're going to have war with North Korea, this whole control grid is rolling out. This whole GM grid is rolling out. Nothing is changing. It's all going forth on steroids because nobody's paying any attention to it.
Yep, and we're being attacked on multiple fronts, fronts that we're not even aware of. If you look at the levels of testosterone among men, they have gone down dramatically within the last few years. You see PBAs and plastic being uh, inundated within our food, within our water, and the effects are profound. Uh, and, and I wanted to bring this to kind of a bigger subject, a bigger topic with you, Max. Do these people know what they're doing, and, and what is kind of their end goal? uh to all this because we're, we're seeing it in front of us but, but this seems so irrational this seems so sinister this seems so so evil and and we've seen horrible acts being committed but this is on such an atrocious level because they're lying to us the same time they're doing this to us they're telling us a school will give someone education meanwhile it just teaches them not to think you know we have medicine that is supposed to be healing us but just numbs us and creates more side effects and hurts us more than it would actually help us and now we're having the majority of the country on site psychotropic drugs here in the United States. Uh, same with every institution that we're dealing with. A government is not there to protect you. You know, every aspect of kind of society is 180 when you really start looking and delving into the reality of it. And the overall question is, why are they doing this? Well, yeah, you've got to look at it from the perspective of a farm. You know, you're being farmed. The human race is being farmed. There are basically two different species here. If you, if you think about it that way, there's the normal human beings and there's the psychopaths. And the psychopaths have no empathy and they are farming this species and they have been for a very long time. And when you think of it from the perspective of a farmer, it makes very good sense to do this. If you can be growing blank humans and you can control the way they think and you can mold their thought, you can grow your worker race or your, your scientists or your politicians or your police officers or all the different breeds that you want. You can genetically engineer what you want. And in the meantime, you've got your people. You've got your biggest states of land. You've got control of all the resources. You're still breeding with each other. They keep all breeding within their families. They don't eat the jam food. They don't take the vaccinations. So they're genetically altering the rest of the human cattle to be what they want so they can farm them in the manner that they choose. You know, they'll do this to the Western world, basically. They'll do it to all the Western world, all the white races. This is what they're doing to Europe. They're just completely destroying and demoralizing Europe because it's very hard to control all these different countries. So you've got to turn it into one big mishmash, hence the creation of the EU, and then flooding the place with, with immigrants. So it'll all just rape and rape and rape and breed and breed and breed. So it all becomes one race over the next 100 years. That's the plan. And turn the white races into these little automaton robots, which will go out and basically harvest the third world for them the way they want. I mean, if you're a farmer, it makes great sense when you look at it. If you think about this as different cattle and different pens and different department stores or one big department store with different franchises and you think you're at the top and you've got this little ant farm and you're just puppeteering it and you're just getting off on harvesting this species and playing the game the way you want to play it. That's why they do it. There is no real monetary incentive. They don't do it for wealth. They do it for power. They do it for control. They want to control everything. That's just the way it is. And that's the game. And that's the way they play it. And to them, it is a game. And it's also a form of bliss. As I've often said, the dark energy that these people get in, that's why you can't ever appeal to their, their, you know, their common sense or their, their better side or their empathy because they don't have any. They enjoy what they do. They enjoy harvesting little children. They enjoy raping little children. They enjoy war. They enjoy bloodshed. They like it. They get energy from it. They laugh about it. Look at Hillary Clinton. When Gaddafi was, was murdered and raped on TV with an iron bar, she could hardly contain herself. She was cackling. She was almost hysterical on television just at the glee of watching this man suffer. Yeah. This is the sort of people that we're dealing with, and people have got to get that into their heads. You're being farmed, and the only way you're really going to free yourself from this farm is to realize it. And to realize that we're all in this together. Allow people to think differently, and let's all have a common focus on freedom and emancipation from slavery. You know, as I've often said, Luke, the world is run by a cacistocracy. The worst people possible for the job, the, the absolute scum of the earth, the, the most abominable criminal class that society has ever spawned have somehow managed to get themselves to the top of society and they are colluding with each other through these governments to control and farm the rest of the world brilliantly said i was going to ask you for a solution and i think waking up is a very important one and i know for a lot of people these issues are kind of controversial they don't want to talk about them because a lot of people see themselves and, and the majority of people in this world and i traveled a lot of it and i spoke to a lot of people on the ground they're good, loving human beings, and they can't even imagine another human being doing this to another person. But if you look at corporate world, 
why wouldn't the leaders of this country, the, the leaders of the banks and the financial institutions, treat it like you described it, a farm? Uh, it makes perfect rational sense because we've seen those cold, rash decisions being made also in the business world. We've seen it made uh, geopolitically in the political world. We've seen it done over and over again. What makes you think it's not happening to all of us, especially with all these kind of central controllers, these people above us, who push certain things and deny a lot of this information away from us? And really, that information that you're hearing right now on this video is, is empowering. It's something that they are afraid of because it frees you from that kind of mental slavery and emotional manipulation and control that they have over you because once you realize what's going on you could finally start working towards freeing yourself finding the real love that real kind of consciousness that real kind of spirituality within yourself to get away from their harvest because then you cannot be controlled in any way max i want to thank you because i gave you a lot of very blank open-ended questions and i didn't make this interview easy on you but you gave me really spectacular answers i want to leave you kind of uh with the last message of whatever you want to say and, and where could people find more information about you look you'll find everything from about me on the crowhouse.com and it is really important that people see that you know the solution is to to realize what's going on you are being farmed and you know these people they're not going to help you we have to help ourselves we really do and it's up to us to realize what's going on and, and now's the time we can do it we really can but don't think they're going to uh you're going to get any any help from the politicians you're not you've got to call it out for what it is and realize what's happening here and, and stand up and make a difference now's the time we can do it thanks for having me on luke it's always a pleasure to talk to you brother you're awesome and incredible love you very much back at you brother